because we don't lack ambition around here, we're going to work from the very smallest things all the way up to the very, very biggest. And so we're going to start with the smallest. And it's worth the thought that, you know, of all the many, many generations of humans that there have been, it's only maybe four or five generations ago that humans were actually scientifically convinced that the atom actually existed. It's so recent in human history. And yet now, we don't just take for granted the existence of atoms. We're moving them, manipulating them, engineering them. And so our first speaker this evening is going to tell us a little bit about engineering on the nanoscale. So to start us off, please welcome to the stage Dr. Manish Tiwari. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> that's a downer, is it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna start by telling you about what we are looking at in terms of nano-engineered systems and how they are enabling some fascinating applications in energy and healthcare. So I've got a number of my first year students in the room and this is my chance to show you what it is that I do on the research side. So welcome, let's see what we are looking at. So the first thing I want to show you about is 3D printing, and not just any 3D printing, uh, but what we call high resolution 3D printing. So in this video here, we've got a very fine nozzle, about 10 micrometer in diameter, where the ink is being pushed out pneumatically. And by layering this, we can get high resolution structures, which are precise down to sub-micrometer even. We can do it pneumatically or electrically. And because we have this precision capability, it allows us to make some amazing new devices. So flexible electronic circuits for once. And on the other hand, we can think about making some really tiny miniaturized sensors that can be put on someone's hand or even implanted inside the body and then communicate wirelessly with uh, clinicians in order to solve the healthcare challenges. So this is one thing I wanted to share with you about and we are working around that. The second thing I wanted to tell you about is solar energy. And concentrated solar cells are a very nice way of harnessing electricity from solar energy. The problem with that is these things ha are only about 20% efficient. So 80% of the energy gets wasted as heat. Now that's an opportunity, right? So what we can do is we can use efficient microfluidic technologies to cool things, these chips, in a very efficient manner and get this otherwise wasted heat and utilize it in secondary applications. So applications such as heating a building like this or using efficient refrigeration, which can then be utilized to preserve food or pharmaceutical drugs in low resource countries. We can use it to desalinate water, seawater, to produce more uh, potable water. And we can do some cool things like biodiesel production using this heat for process intensification. And what this allows us to do is this amazing way of looking at the complex problem of energy water and food nexus uh, and solve some really interesting sustainability problems. So the last thing I want to show you is what we call smart nano-engineered surfaces. And here's an example of smart surface. This is super hydrophobic. Uh, lotus leaf, which happens naturally, right? And the reason that lotus leaf is super hydrophobic, super for excellence, and hydro means water, so hydrophobic means waterphobic. The lotus leaf has got nanoscale texture combined with hydrophobicity that makes it very difficult for liquid water to stick to it, which means that we can start to design fabrics which can make us forget about the umbrella and always forgetting about them, right? What else can we do? Well, we can uh, make these surfaces all the way from uh, plastic substrates to metallic surfaces and, it, and enable a number of different applications. And one particular application that I'm really passionate about has to do with this annoying delay that we go through at times when we have a snowfall and the flights get delayed because of the icing. So here you're looking at actual experimental data where we have designed these surfaces with this kind of properties, super hydrophobic properties, and these surfaces can delay ice formation at minus 20 degrees centigrade for a day. Not bad, right? What else we can do? We can have this liquid water droplet at minus 30 
uh, centigrade impact on this and not freeze. What comes next? Well, butterflies. Butterflies are super hydrophobic as well. And they tend to be flexible, which means that you can have a surface that can take impact even better. So what did we do? We actually made coating, which is flexible and nano-engineered, which enable us to do impact, liquid impact at higher speeds than anything else that is possible currently in the market, right? Now we can go a step better than uh, nature. And we can control the size of these nanoparticles to tens of nanometers, which means that we can have super hydrophobicity and optical transparency. So efficient solar cells, no more dirty windows, and car windshield, right? And you can think of other applications, one of which will be we can make surfaces that make it very hard for bacteria to grow. So this is a control surface, and here bacteria are finding it very difficult to grow on these. So that means no more wrong or dirty kitchen counter. Hopefully that helps and it gives you a flavor of what nanoengineering can do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.